Hey brother! To open or not to open? Man, a couple of weeks ago I listed out my top seven unanswered questions for Star Wars The Force Awakens. And now since seeing the movie a second time, which was harder than you think, seriously sold out at 2.30 on a Wednesday 12 days after a premiere, what? Although I guess I can't blame anyone for wanting to go see you. The big question I still just can't shake is the identity of Ray's parents. So today I'm going to run down my top three suspects. <laughs> Suspect number one, Han Solo. First of all, Rey ends up with the Millennium Falcon at the end of the movie, and it just feels like that ship should belong to a Solo. Second, Kylo Ren actually says when he's looking at Rey's memories, you see Han Solo as the father you never had. Which is worth noting, because it means she specifically remembers not having a father, which means it was probably her mother who left her on Jakku. The other big problem I have with this theory is that Han and Leia speak openly about having a son and make no mention of a daughter. Now that doesn't rule it out, because it could still go down, but it would probably have to be in a situation like this. Han would have had to have left without knowing that Leia was pregnant with the second child. And then, after Kylo Ren turns on Luke and kills off all of his new Jedi students, Leia, knowing that he would go after a potential Force-sensitive sibling who could threaten him, would then hide her on Jakku and not tell, well, anybody. And since we see Han and Leia reunite, it would even make sense that she doesn't bring it up with him, because the ground is probably unstable and dropping a whole, oh hey, we had a second child together in the middle of that? wouldn't really be a good idea. Suspect number two, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, what? Yeah, I know, it sounds crazy, but there's actually more evidence than you'd think. The big one out of the gate is their accents. Rey and Obi-Wan are the only protagonists in the entire Star Wars franchise that have British accents. Well, except for C-3PO. Hey, brother! Now, that might sound like a coincidence, but it seems less so when you consider that other British actors like Liam Neeson and John Boyega used American accents. Plus, J.J. Abrams has said that Rey's isolation is a clue to her identity, which is a possible reference to Obi-Wan in Episode 4, although, to be fair, he could also be referencing Anakin. Or Luke. Speaking of Anakin, let's talk about his lightsaber. The saber calls out to Rey, and Maz Katana indicates that it's because she's part of the Skywalker lineage, that it passed to Luke from his father before him. But who did the passing? Obi-Wan. And he had the saber for like 20 years, way longer than Luke ends up owning it. And during Rey's vision, we can hear both Sir Alec Guinness and Ewan McGregor's voice calling out to Rey, saying, Rey, these are your first steps. Steps. How cool would it be if it was a Kenobi and at the end a Kenobi is giving Luke the same lightsaber back again. And it would mean at the end Rey and Kylo Ren are like recreating the battle between their grandfathers. Really for the situation to work, Rey would need to be Obi-Wan's granddaughter and he would have had to have like hooked up with someone during the Clone Wars. But Obi-Wan was a good Jedi who would never break code and have a relationship, right? Well allow me to introduce you to Duchess Santine from the Star Wars Clone Wars animated series, which I will remind you is canon. In season 2, episode 13, Voyage of Temptation, the Duchess, a pacifist who leads the Council of Neutral System and wants no part of the war, gets put in a life or death situation and confesses to Obi-Wan that she has loved him since before the war when he and Qui-Gon came to her aid. And Obi-Wan responds, he would have left the Jedi Order for her. Well, lucky for him, Anakin then jumps in and saves the day and they'll go about their happy business until like the fifth season when she does end up dying. But hey, that still leaves three seasons of potential younglin' making, if you know what I mean. And if she did have a child, I have to imagine she would want to keep it a secret, even from Obi-Wan, because of how it might affect his position in the Jedi Order, and because of how it might involve her system in the war. Sadly, she probably carried that secret to the grave with her, leaving Obi-Wan free of burden to go watch Luke on Tatooine for 20 years while his bastard child grows up, gets married, and then has another child, and that child is Rey. I know, it's a lot of ifs and buts, but at least there is some canonical evidence that Obi-Wan could have descendants. And that brings us to suspect number three, Luke Skywalker. While the Solo and Kenobi theories have a lot of ifs and buts, there seems to be a mountain of evidence that Luke is Rey's father. Just like Anakin and Luke, she starts off alone on a desert planet. The lightsaber calls out to her and Maz indicates that it's because it's part of her lineage. Maz also gets Rey to accept that the reason nobody has come back for her is because nobody is coming back for her. 
but also says there is someone who still can. Now, when you combine that line with the line from Kylo Ren earlier about how Rey never knew her father, it sounds an awful lot like Rey was left on Jakku by her mother, never knew her father, and now her mother is dead so she can't return, and the one person who can get her, her father, doesn't know he needs to. Alas, if only we had some indication that Luke had lost a wife. Oh, wait, is that a grave he's standing at at the end? Oh my god. Also, the screenplay for Star Wars The Force Awakens was just released and revealed that when Luke sees Rey at the end, he knows who she is and, quote, looks upon her amazed and conflicted. Amazed because he can't believe he's seeing her alive and conflicted because he can't put all the pieces together. My guess? Whenever Kylo Ren turned on Luke and started murdering all of his new pupils, he also killed Luke's pregnant wife. Luke assumes that his wife and unborn child are both dead, but I'm guessing, just like Anakin's wife, she is still able to deliver her child and it is never known to Luke. I'm also guessing that Leia was there for this moment and knowing that her son would hunt down other Force-sensitive relatives of his, sent her away to Jakku for hiding. And this is conveniently right when Han and Luke go missing in Leia's life, so she can't tell either of them. That would explain why Luke doesn't go looking for her, why Han doesn't recognize her, and why somehow Leia actually does seem to recognize her at the end of the film. Plus, why would Leia send Rey of all people to go find Luke at the end of the movie? I'll tell you why. It's because Leia knows the only person in the galaxy who can make a greater impact on Luke than herself is his daughter. But if Rey knows who Leia is, wouldn't she know more about Luke and Han Solo? Not necessarily. Remember, Rey only knows of Han Solo as the great smuggler, not the war hero, so she might not even realize that Han Solo was married to Leia, or that Leia was Luke's sister. And besides all of that, Star Wars is a story about the Skywalkers, not the Kenobis, not the Solos. And as cool as it would be for Kylo Ren and Rey to be recreating the Skywalker-Kenobi fight, it's easy even cooler if you ask me if the two of them are the physical embodiments of the struggle between Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader. Because it always comes back to Vader, the one who is supposed to bring balance to the Force. Rey, the daughter of his son. Balance. Kylo Ren, the son of his daughter. Balance. Rey, representing Anakin, the light side user who feels the pull of the dark side. Balance. Kylo Ren, the dark side user who feels the pull of the light. Balance. And only by working together can the two of them bring balance to the Force and overthrow Supreme Leader Snoke. Balance. Team Skywalker. Ben, my question for you and everybody else is, who do you think Ray's parents are? Let me know down in the towel section below and I will see you in another life, brother. These socks are amazing! Guys, thanks for watching and always, if you haven't yet, please like this video, it really helps out the channel, and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future Star Wars content. If you want to see my other six unanswered questions from Star Wars The Force Awakens, you can click this video here, or if you want to catch up on a bunch of cool, fun facts from the original trilogy, Ben put together a really cool series right here here. Also, I've been loving the Disney Princess Tournament we're having over on Twitter. Today's battle is between Jasmine and Belle. Make sure you head over there and vote and then follow me so you don't miss the rest of the polls. See you next time.